15 points a game last year. Khalid, thanks so much. What are you looking forward to most out of back to normal college basketball? Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, really how everything was my freshman year. Um, the fans, um, being able to uh, travel, you know, the right way instead of like always being postponed or postponed games or postponed practices. So I'm just really just to get back at it and just keep going. We're going to toss it now to Tom, who has some media questions for you now, Khalif. All right, our first question will be with from uh, Sam Cohn of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Califf, uh, after finishing last season as a team's leading scorer, I'm curious, where do you feel like your game can make the biggest jump from year one to year two with the program? Um, I feel like I had a decent year last year. I feel like it's a big jump for me this year, um, working on the right things. Um, really just locking in with uh, Coach McKee all summer and uh, assistant coaching staff. Um, I think I did some good things last year, and I thought I also did a lot of things that I could really improve on, and that's what we worked on all summer. So, you know, that's what I'm going to show this year. All right, our next question will be from Sean Pastor with OwlsDaily.com. So, Caleb, do you sort of expect to go faster this year, you know, the team, tempo and so and such? Uh, yeah, we, we're looking to get out and transition more. Um, I think um, we have a, a, a really diverse team where, where a lot of guys can, um, can can get it, can get the rebound and push it ahead um, early. So, um, you know, a little bit of both this year. Um, whatever coach needs us to do, um, depending on the team we play, and that's what we're going to uh, try to go out and do every night. Okay. And then second, just was curious if you were able to were able to get with your brother all this summer. I guess he was in Italy or in the off season. Yeah, I, um, I worked out with my brother a lot this summer. Um, we played one on one a lot. Um, really, just being able to have him and have him develop my game, well, it meant a lot to me this summer because you know you don't really get that time. You know, I, I see him only about uh, not even a quarter of the year, and I was so used to in high school always seeing him come home at night. So. It's a transition, but I'm happy he was home this summer, so, you know, he could help me, you know, tell me the ropes of what I could have got better at since he was such an elite scorer in college. Had he been home the previous summer? Have I been home the previous summer? No, had or? he been home the previous summer? Uh, Not really. Um, He was home for a little bit, and then he had to leave. He was in the G League at first. Then um, he came home for a little bit and went straight to Russia last year. And this year, he came home a little longer um, for about two months, and now he's in Italy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Question will be with from uh, Glenn Papajan from uh, PhillyCollegeSports.com. Yes, Caleb, how much more familiar are you with your teammates now, and how do you think that's going to have you improve with your game on the floor? <laughs> Uh, we're a lot more, you know, comfortable with each other. Um, last year we didn't really had a summer to, um, to really work out with each other or, or, or get better. There was always a stop and start. Um, so now, you know, this year, a lot of guys dedicated themselves to, you know, not having the year like we did last year. Um, we were really dis uh, disappointed with the results and we know we had a lot more to give. So whether that's on the court, or off the court, we just always, um, put our best foot forward to spend time with each other and build as much chemistry as we can. And um, so far in practice, it's been showing. Um, we're doing great so far, and it's only the beginning for us. Thank you. All right, our next question will be from Jacob Schwartz of Voice Report. Caleb, Voice, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Um, first of all, uh, congratulations on a great first season over at Temple. Uh, you know, it's been kind of reported that this team is has both youth as well as type of chemistry. Um, Memphis is probably considered, along with Houston, to be the top two teams in this league. How do you expect to uh, contend, and uh, what are your, uh, I guess, goals uh, this season? Um, our goals is probably any team in the, uh, in the American Conference is to win, win the American Conference, win, win the league. Um, we're not going to look at Memphis or Houston like they're anybody else. You know, we got to we gotta win every game. Um, we don't care if it's uh, Houston or Memphis or Wichita State or UCF or East Carolina. Um, every game we're going to play like it's our last. Um, at the end of the day, if we can go – if we can win every game by 
20. That's what we're going to try to do. If we can win it by two points, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to come out and compete every night. Um, I personally, or we don't personally care about who's on the other side of us. We're just trying to win as many games as we can. You have a very, very talented freshman core coming in, led by Hasir Miller, considered one of the top guards in the uh, coming out of Newman Garetti. What type of addition does he bring? And then you've also got from Camden Catholic, uh, Zach Hicks. What are you expecting from that core? Uh, our, our, our core guys, um, the freshmen coming in, they they picked up a lot faster than I thought they would. Um, you know, I give them a lot of credit for just hopping in and be able to go from the jump. Uh, of course, they had to learn some things, but, you know, as far as they are right now, I, I, I didn't expect them to, you know, to, to get where they are. Um, but it's just, it just has to do with coaching and it has to do with the leadership on this team. You know, I'm proud of those guys of, of, of where they're going and, and they're going to get to see some minutes on the floor this year and, and they're going to be ready for whatever, you know. Thanks, Caleb. Thanks, Caleb. Mm -hmm. It takes time. All right. Uh, our next uh, question will come from uh, Josh Verlin of City of Basketball. Hey, Caleb, how you doing? Um, I'm good, how are you? This, this group of guards, yourself, Damian, you know, Jeremiah, just sort of all, you know, getting their first real big taste of college ball last year. You mentioned the chemistry, but in terms of, like, on the court, where do you feel like you guys, as that backcourt group, really need to take a step forward to get Temple up the standings this year? Uh, I, really everywhere. You know, uh, last year we didn't really get to all experience really playing with each other you know, at our best. Um, last year, I missed the first, you know, I missed uh, three months last year. And then my opening game was against uh, Tulane. And I, I didn't have to, I didn't have a, uh, a day of practicing. I just hopped in. And then when we go on, when we go leading up into the tournament, we didn't have um, uh, Dame for, for, for some games. So, you know, we really didn't get to play at our best. You know, it was always a stop and go, uh, whether it's just COVID or, or injuries. Um, Jeremiah, he, he held his own last year as a freshman. He had great stats, um, probably surprised a lot of people. Um, and I think this year, you know, it's like the, it's the first time we really got to had a summer to work together. We was all here during the summer playing one-on-ones and playing pickup. Um, and now in, in practice, we get to play together and, and, and healthy and, and no stoppage. So, you know, our games have really got to the next level. Um, I'm excited to uh, to show show people how, how – uh, how much better we improved, not only as our individuals and uh, our individual talents, but as a team. So uh, we're excited to um, get the show rolling. I think like one area statistically that that certainly needed improvement, it, you know, the the just the overall shooting percentages and and from three point range, especially with you know Brendan going back to Dartmouth. Do you, do you see that? Is that a shot selection issue? Is that just a reps issue? Is that COVID? Where do you sort of see that issue when you review tape from last year about why the shooting percentages? You know, where where you guys would want them to be? Uh, you know, just uh, extra reps. Um, a lot of it was, you know, um, bad shot selection, you know, especially from, from my, on my behalf, you know, having the four shots. Um, but this year we have a lot of guys that that can that can that can do a lot off the dribble, off the catch and shoot. And um I mean that's really all I can say. You know, our actions have to speak louder than my, than the words I'm saying right now. So we're excited to show you guys what we could do. Thanks, Caleb. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question is from Owen Boyle of WHIP. Hey, Caleb. Uh, outside of the Charleston Classic tournament at the beginning of the season, you guys open up with five home games. How crucial is it going to be for you guys to get a good start in those five home games, considering it was a slower start last year? Oh, well, we want to we want to get off to a great start, of course. Um you know, every game we go into, we want to look to win, of course. Um, you know, those 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 five crucial games that we have, um, we're just going to go out and compete. Uh, we'll, let the, we'll let the rest handle itself, but, you know, we're just going to compete as hard as we can. Uh, like I said previously, we're not we're not trying to have a season like last year. We're not going to have a season last, like last year. You know, we're just going to, you know, all the work we put in is going to show. That's really all I can say about that, so. All right, now we'll have a follow-up from Sean Pastor. Yeah, Caleb, uh, two quick follow-ups. Uh, first, curious what uh, you sort of see from Sage and Jaleel, two guys who were basically on the sidelines watching last year. Um, Sage is great. 
um, tenacious rebounder, um, always extra effort, gives us, puts his best foot forward every single day, consistent guy, um, always looks out for the benefit of the team, um, just like Jalil. Uh, and honestly, I, I can't I can't give Jalil enough uh, praise for how, for how far he's come. Um, I think he's going to shock a lot of people. Um, he's tremendous offensively gifted, uh, tremendous defensively gifted. Um, let's see, the sky's the limit for Jalil. You know, I go I go at him every day because I see what he could be, and um, he pushes me. He pushes me also. And honestly, it's just like having him this year. It, it's it's amazing because he can do so many things. So I'm I'm excited for both of them. I'm excited for Jalil. I'm excited for Sage. I know they didn't get to play last year, and I know how much they want to uh, play and win this year. So I'm excited to see what what, uh, what the future has for them. And last thing I wanted to ask was, um, you know, have you ever watched tape of that ball going off your foot and uh, since then? And does that spark an emotion, anything in particular? Yeah, drive. More, uh, emotion is drive. Um, the will that I don't want to have that feeling again and that, you know, I felt like last year I let my teammates down, um, and I'm just not trying to have that. So it was it was motivation all summer, um, and just it still affects me today, where I just want to keep just I can't even put it into words how much I want to you know go back to that tournament and just win as many games as possible. I want to be holding that trophy at at the end of the year, and I want to see you know. My, my my teammates and my coach is smiling because we know where we were and and to see where we are where we're going to be at then. So that's the feeling it brings. Hey Caleb, I mean, uh, Mike O'Donnell in the studio here. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was asking if you actually do watch how if you've watched that um, that um, that highlight or you know more than you once if or I, you, oh, if I yeah. watched it. Yeah, yeah, I, I've watched. Yeah, I've watched it. I mean, I mean, we kind of go over film and all that, but I, yeah, I watched the play. I know, I know, I made a mistake. Um, something people don't, you know, you really don't see too often. But you know, that's basketball. You know, you have a lot of ups and downs. Um, that was just one of my downs. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're asking me if I'll take the, if I'll take the last shot again, there'll be no question in my mind. I know the work I put in. Um, guys on the team know how much work I put in the coaching staff does um they have a a enormous amount of faith and belief in me and you know I wasn't trying to let them down on purpose so if you're asking if I'll take the last shot if I watch it yeah I did and I still would take the last shot again hey Caleb uh, I wanted to go back to a conversation you were having about uh Jay Lil and I think most fans are going to be really excited to watch him this season. But you talked about you two going back and forth. How has he handled that? Because I'm sure in practice, you're not giving him any room whatsoever. Well, yeah, you know, I'm trying not to give him as much room as possible. But he's he's really talented. I mean, um, can we, I think he's going to be a, he's going to be, he's going to be a star in this league. He's going to be a star here at Temple. Um, Sky's the limit, really. I mean, no, he doesn't back down. I'll give him that. He's from Jersey. He's not going back down. You know, I'm from Jersey. He's from Jersey. <laughs> He's not going back down. So um, he has that fight in him. And and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do this year. I already know he's going to shot. A lot, a lot of people watching, you know, it, just, he should be on a lot of people's radar. But, you know, I'm not going to speak too much. I'm going to just let him show what he's going to do this year. But very confident for me. The coaches, the players on the team, we're very confident, Jalil. Caleb Battle, we're excited to watch you play. Appreciate the time. Appreciate it. When you look at their season last year, they go five and eleven. I mean, but they return a lot between Caleb, Damian Dunn, Jeremiah Williams. They had five stoppages last year because yeah. of COVID. This is a team that gets to you know some momentum. Where are they going to draw maybe their success out of that game? You just said it. I mean, think about the challenge of that season. You're young. You have so many stoppages. You know, Caleb and Damian don't get to play together for a lot, a, a large part of the season. So they've already gone through pretty much the hard part of it. Now it's time to rebuild, reload, get that consistency. 
And I don't know about you guys, but when you heard Caleb speak, I got chills. Like, this guy is yeah. driven, motivated. He's like, yo, give me the ball. I want to take the last yeah. shot again. I love to hear that from players. Outside Caleb and Damian, like, who can be some game changers that's on this roster? Nick Jordan uh, it can be that sniper, three-point shooter that I think Temple was missing. Temple runs a lot of pick-and-roll action, a lot. And they're looking for roles. They're looking for opportunities to attack the guy who's, um, uh, who's helping on the weak side. But what they missed was that kind of three-point sniper that would take the pressure off some of the ball-handling duties for particularly Damian Dunn in battle. And so I think he's a guy who came in. He started the last three games of the season, hit six threes. And if you can incorporate him into the offense, there were times – where their half-court offense was too stagnant. I think Coach McKee would even echo that. It was just too stagnant, and they missed that three-point shooter. I think he could be that guy to really open things up. And Coach Aaron McKee joining us now in his third year there at Temple, but former player knows the program so well. Coach, what do you know about your team now that you've been able to practice for a little bit? What have you learned about them so far? <laughs> well, hey, guys, I, I don't want to give off too much, but I'm, I'm still learning. I know we, you know, we're still – young to you know to some degree you think about it in our shortened season last year you know um our young guys our freshmen and sophomores they only got a chance to play 16 uh college basketball games so we're still a work in progress and you know fortunate for this summer we were able we was able to have a summer where we had the weight training and skill development and you know things of that nature and last summer with some of these younger guys that we asked a lot of um, last year, uh, we didn't have that opportunity. So hopefully, you know, that, that, that helps us out. Coach McKee, we appreciate you joining us. We're now going to toss it to the media who has some questions for you. From uh, Josh Berlin of City of Basketball. Hey, Josh. Hey, Aaron, good to see you. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, this young, you know, core of guards that you've got, Damian, Califf, uh, Jeremiah now, you know, Fabe's there as well, but but especially the ones that are coming back from last year. Mm -hmm. Where as, as a group do you really need to see them take the next step, uh, especially sort of from an on-the-court perspective, um, you know, for your team to, to also take a step forward? Well, de decision-making is going to be important. Um, you got a lot of young young guards out there, you know, just taking care of the ball. We can't go out there and, and, and beat ourselves. So I think I think the decision making um, part is going to be big. I think the efficiency on the offensive end is going to be also um, key for us, and you know, making open shots and attacking and getting to the free throw line, and you know, all of those different things. But you know, we're a team that's going to hang our hat on the defensive side, and those guys are completely bought into to doing that. And if we can eliminate turnovers and, and um, beating ourselves that way, and we can be more efficient on the offensive end. I think we got a chance to be a pretty good basketball team. You mentioned offensive efficiency there a couple of times. When you mm -hmm. reviewed tape from last year, was that, you know, if you had to sort of grade your team on shot selection, how happy were you generally with the shots they took? And was it a matter of just hitting more open ones or just finding better shots? It's just generating better shots. I think getting, we want to, we call it, you know, paint threes, where we're, we're collapsing the defense and we're kicking it out. Um, and we're getting those open threes and we're able to knock those down. And, you know, we got a game that we practice every day where we call good, better, best, where we're generating better shots. You know, I might have a good shot. The next guy might have a better shot. The guy after him might have the best shot. And, you know, we have to be proficient in, in doing easy baskets for ourselves. And, and that helps. I think getting layups and getting shots around a basket that you can – that you can make and it makes the basket a lot bigger for you getting to the free throw line and all of those things. We're not the type of team that can come out and just start firing threes from the beginning of the game. And we have to flatten defenses out by putting pressure on them by attacking and just trying to generate easy offensive looks for us. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. All right. Our next question will be from uh, Sam Cohn of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Aaron, it's good to see you. Um, Caleb Battle had told us that he feels like Hessier Miller and Zach Hicks have adapted to the college game a little bit quicker than he might have thought. What have you seen from those two uh, in practice so far? They've been competing. They've been doing everything that we asked them to do. And I think the important part for those guys was was having a summer of being in a college program, weight training and, and skill development. That, that helps. 
um, those guys were, you know, well taught in the high school game and it, it helped them transition over to the, to the college game. They're not there yet, but, um, you know, they're continuing to work and, you know, those are guys that I'm going to be expecting to, you know, give us some, some, some minutes. And then just one more follow-up. You had spent uh, a good portion of last year talking about how difficult it was to implement things and teach these new guys, uh, these younger guys, new things with the lack of practice and COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. How is practice different now than it was last year? And what are you able to do more now than you were last year? Well, we've, we've certainly had a lot more practice time, you know, considering the summer that we had and, and leading up to now, we certainly had a you know, a little bit more practice time. And so you get the opportunity to teach more. Last year was start, stop, stop, start. Um, we couldn't have all the guys in again in the gym, you know, because of the, the COVID activity and the things that we were, we were faced with last season. So we get to teach more and we get to be patient and take our time with these guys. So again, you know, I had a true freshman last year as a starting point guard and, you know, he didn't have the luxury of being, taught some of the things that, you know, we wanted to do within our offense. Um, so he was game to do it, and he did it. And I'm expecting the same thing with these guys. And they got a little bit more um, teaching under their belt. And, you know, you know we'll see what happens uh, from there. But certainly um, time spent with those guys over the summer can, can do as well. All right, our next question will be from Owen Boyle of WHIP. Hey, Coach. Um, I talked to Caliph about this. Uh, you guys, outside of the Charleston Classic, open up with five straight non-conference home games. Um, how can you use that as an advantage to, to get off the, the right foot this season, considering maybe last year was slow, you know, stop and start with COVID and things like that? Well, it's important. If you, if you want to be a good team, you want to you take care of home court. You want to be, you know, you want to be good. You want to use your uh, the crowd's energy and everything else to your advantage when you're playing at home. And, you know, most teams that are really good that, that plays deep into the postseason are teams that are, that are good at home. And so that's what we want to establish. Uh, we anticipate being a good team, so we want to establish our home court advantage. All right, our next question will be from Ray Dunn, also from WHIP. Hey, Aaron, I'm just curious. Obviously, year one, you're kind of getting your foot in with the program. Year two, uh, a COVID season. In year three, how do you feel like uh, you are right now within the program you want to put together here at Temple? I feel we're growing. I feel we're, we're establishing the culture that I, wanted, that I want to uh, um, establish. You know, we're young, but, I, you know, I want to win. I said it don't matter the way college sports is now, the way sports is now, and – you know, as opposed to when I played basketball, freshmen didn't really play. Sophomores barely got an opportunity to play. And we have some freshmen and some sophomores that, you know, that we're, we're counting on. And they got a, you know, they got a lot of heavy lifting that they got to do. So we're a state culture. You know, we, we have to continue to create our, our identity. And, and, and that's going out and defending at a high level and being efficient on the offensive end. And those guys are buying into it. It's just a matter of getting out there and, 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 you know, playing some real games right now. And a quick follow-up to that, or just follow-up in general here. Uh, Emmanuel Akpomo obviously going to help with uh, the work down low. There have been some games last season where you got really out-rebounded. What have you seen from your forwards and what they're going to be able to accomplish this season? It's something that we focused on um, all summer. Just more being in better position to rebound the ball. And, and for us to, you know, be able to crash the offensive glass. And so in order for you to be a really good defensive team, you got to rebound the ball. You can't give teams second chance opportunities. And that certainly, you know, wasn't one of our strong suits last year. And, and we focused on that throughout the summer. Uh, we got better at that. We want to continue to get better at that. You know, with me anticipating us being a good team, we got to defend at a high level, at a high level, but we have to finish those possessions off with, with rebounding. And, and, and that's, to me, it's just hard. And, and toughness and, and, and just having the, the, the will to play in that pain and, and, and be the better guy in there. All right, our next question will be from Glenn Papajan from uh, Philly Sports, college sports com. Hello, Aaron. Uh, you've had the opportunity to work with the uh, players over the summer. 
Uh, who has shown the most improvement and can have a, an impact on the team? A lot of our guys have had a good summer. Uh, Damian and, and Caleb spent a lot of time in the gym together this summer working and just trying to get better and competing against each other. I think Nick Jourdain and, and Sage Tolbert had a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups throughout the summer that's helped um, each individual uh, get get better. And it's important. Um, we, we got competition at every position, so it's it's raising the level in, in, in practice, but it also helped those guys get better every day where they know they have to bring it every day because they got somebody that's across from them that that's that want those minutes that they that they covet. Thank you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question will be from uh, Javon Evans of Al Scoop. Hey, Aaron, when you look at guys like Jalil White, Sage Tolbert, Nick Jordan, guys with just length and versatility, can you talk about the impact they're going to have on the team and the rotation this season? Yeah, adding those guys to the uh, to the roster, it it gives us more length and, and versatility, and that's what I want to look look like um, to be able to play at any pace, to be able to play against and with you know any team in the country. Jalil being six seven long, Sage being six eight and long and athletic, um, Zach Hicks you throw in there, he's six eight and he's long. Um, so you know when you look at our team now, we're a little bit longer. Uh, we're a little bit more athletic, um, and, and hopefully we can display that. We want to play at a good pace, being able to get up and down the floor. We want to get out in some of those passing lanes on the on the defensive side, and I don't think the, the type of team that we had last year, we couldn't do those things. We just tried to manage games last year. And defensively, you talked about them getting in the passing lanes. What will that do for you as far as uh, switching on ball screens and stuff like that? Well, when you got length and athleticism, it can it can you can you can become more disruptive on the defensive side, and that's what you really wanna you wanna you know you really wanna do. You wanna be solid in your your core principles on the defensive side, but you wanna be disruptive at the same time. And we got some guys that's athletic enough that can get up and down the floor, that can get in those passing lanes and do that for us. Thanks, Aaron. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question will be from Jason Munns from the uh, Commercial Appeal. Hey, Aaron, I think it's a uh, safe assumption that your familiarity with Penny's coaching staff kind of skyrocketed this offseason. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm curious to uh, get your take on, um, you know, like how, how uh, Coach Brown and Sheed change Memphis's dynamic. Well, it validates his staff certainly on a – Hall of Fame coaching side with, with Coach Brown. It, it validates his staff on the player Hall of Fame side with Rashid Wallace, who's a guy that grew up here with me in Philadelphia. Um, I probably spent more time with Larry Brown this summer than Penny did, uh, seeing him out on the road. And, you know, whenever I would see him, he would, you know, pull me up a seat and say, come on, sit down next to me. Um, I'm happy for him. He's Basketball is his happy space. Um, he enjoys sitting and watching games all day, and he's a teacher. He enjoys being in the gym all day and just working with kids and just trying to grow this game of basketball, whether it's on the college level or on the professional level. I bet you've got some good stories on on both those guys. Is there anyone that uh, you don't mind sharing uh, about Coach Brown or she? No, I'll, I'll keep those stories to myself. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, we'll go to Sean Pastor with PalsDaily.com. Hey, Aaron. So, Ray, I just look at this roster, and I think, God, he, he's going to have to play 10 guys this year or, or more. Is When you start out here, are you looking at going that deep and trying to figure out how you're going to uh, make it work that way? Sean, can you repeat uh, the question your, your line or my line was going in and out, and I didn't hear the beginning of it? Yeah, sorry. I was just curious if, you know, looking at this roster, whether this is a, a team where you might be going 10 deep, if you're already trying to figure out that part of it. I'm not sure at this point. I know it's difficult to try to play 10 guys. We certainly um, is, we serve, certainly are capable of being able to play uh, 10 guys, but I don't know if that's the best thing for um, consistency over a long time playing 10 guys. But you know, early on in the year, you can tinker with some things and see and shake the bag up a little bit and see and see who comes out of it. Um, 
you know, I want to play the best five guys that give me an opportunity to win basketball games. And, and as I said earlier, that I, I enjoy having competition at every every position because you get maximum effort from those guys every day. Are, uh, are you able to see in the preseason sort of maturity from Caliph and from Damian in particular, um, right, the stuff that you want to see manifest when you get into games? Can you see that now? They're getting, they're getting better. We, we've been practicing against each other, you know, up to this point, and we haven't had no, no, no real tests yet. I think that's the, that will be the determinant as to their growth. But they're certainly, they're certainly taking steps, and it's not just Damien and, and Caliph. It's, it's Jeremiah, it's, it's Nick Jordan, it's Jake Forrester. It's all of these guys that, that we're going to be relying on throughout the year. It's, it's, it's time for all of those guys to take a step in, in maturity and, and on the basketball side. I, mean, I was curious about the schedule, and this is sort of a question for this year and beyond, right? It seems like your non-conference, and maybe it's, right, it's a little bit of COVID-related, a little more local um, than maybe historically. But when you start to skip ahead, and it might be a year or two, and Houston and Cincinnati are leaving this league, um, right, to – you're going to bring in some good teams, but maybe not necessarily, right? Perennial final four contenders. How does that, how is that going to impact your non-conference going forward? I'm not sure. I mean, you, you try to project and you try to put those games in, in place, you know, given the, the, the climate of college sports, college basketball in, in general, I don't know what that's going to look like in a, in a few years, you know, with you know, the conference realignment and everything else. We're certainly open to playing anyone um, that's out there. It's just a matter of, of making it happen. So, you know, I don't know. We continue to make phone calls to see who's available and who's willing. Um, but, you know, a lot of people's schedules changed and a lot of people are looking at scheduling a little bit different because of the, the COVID situation. So we'll see. With, we'll see what the future looks like over time. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll do two more. Uh, first, we'll go to Jacob Schwartz with Voice Report. Sir, pleasure to talk to you as always. How are you, Coach? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? Hang it in there. Uh, so yeah. with J.P. Morbid now gone, <laughs> Uh, for this, uh, you know, going to another school. And you certainly do have a core of freshmen and sophomores coming in for the upcoming season. Your biggest test comes up in game two at against USC. Uh, and then kind of going forward, you know, you get to kind of play like the Delawares and the you know, kind of the heavy type of hitters. What is the focus that you'll need uh, as you start the year with UMES? Well, just, just, just relying on a, just coming out with maximum great effort and defending, um, being efficient on the offensive end. And we don't want to skip steps. I mean, our first game is Merlin Eastern Shore, and that's that's been our focus throughout. And so we want to continue to f- focus on those guys and, and take care of business and, and, you know, prepare for each game as if. We don't want to skip any steps. Um, we got a loaded schedule against some really, really good teams and well-coached teams and um, w- when it comes to competition, we we worry more about what we're doing. If we're taking care of what we're doing, and I think we'll be okay. You have a very good freshman and sophomore core, High Sierra Miller. Um, you know, the, I believe the young man from uh, from Atlanta that's uh, coming in. It's uh, Quincy Adam Akoya, who can pretty much shoot it from mm-hmm. just about uh, anywhere. Uh, and then Zach Hicks from South Jersey, uh, and then of course you get a Damian Dodd and Sage Tolbert. Uh, Jake Forrester's back. I mean, there's a lot of depth on this program. How do you uh, how do you plan to use that? Well, we, we're figuring it out now. I mean, we we have some knowns, but we have some unknowns. We have some guys that haven't, you know, played in a Temple uniform yet. So I'm anticipating those guys, you know, being ready when they get the call, and I'm excited um, just to see how it can how it can play out. For us, we're certainly more athletic. I think we got a little bit more. We got a little bigger, and given the way our conference is structured, it's a it's an older, more mature, more experienced con- uh, conference. I think Sage Tober's 
Tolbert gives us some experience. He's played in some college games and done pretty good. He's a transfer. And so some of our guys got a chance to play last year, not a full year, but um, 16 games and 16 college games. So hopefully that experience helps those guys uh, coming into this season. Thank you, Aaron. Welcome. All right. And our last question will come from uh, Owen Boyle of WHIP. Hey, Coach. Uh, one of the, the main issues, I guess, last year was getting over the hump. Uh, you'd be close in games, and then the opposition would, would pull away, or, or you'd have some tough one-possession losses. This year, how can you guys get over over the hump? Is that something that maybe comes with a little bit more experience for the younger guys? Yeah, more experience, more confidence. Um, just experience being in those, those situations. And, um, you know, I think experience is the best teacher. You know, we had some guys who've never been in that position before. Um, so hopefully it, it pays off uh, for us and um, we're able to get that rebound late in the game. We're able to get that stop late in the game. We're able to hit that key shot or the key free throw late in the game and um, to, you know, f to help us, you know, prevail in those games. If we have any, you know, ambitions of being a good team, we're going to have to do those things. We're going to have to establish ourselves. Um, at home. We're going to have to establish ourselves being a good road team. All of those things are important. Uh, most of our guys that played last year got a taste of that. Um, it was an inconsistent year for us on a number of levels with, with injury, with COVID, and, and everything else. But hopefully we, you know, we're getting away from the, the COVID thing and, you know, with a little bit of luck and, you know, we have good health and we can have a consistent year. And I really be able to assess um, our team. Thank you so much, head coach Aaron McKee. Thanks so much for joining us. Looking forward to watching you guys tip off the season. Thanks, guys. Yep. Enjoy it. So that was